next we look into ACL matching mechanism. Here, this is very important. Okay, the matching stop once a rules is matched. Remember on the two slide earlier, I mentioned that when the rules is matched, it will just stop there and check whether it's permit or deny. It will not go through uh, rules number 15, rules number 20, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's look into how the uh, matching uh, work. So firstly, we will start from here. Okay, does the reference ACL exist? If let's say there is no ACL straight away, you can see that it go into the no and finally it go into the end. That's all. So because there is no ACL, there's nothing to match anymore. So if let's say they do have a matching ACL, so assuming that now I do have a reference ACL axis, then the next thing I'm going to look for is does the ACL contain the rules? Again, if let's say this is no rules, then that's the end. But if let's say they do have a rules, let's say they do have a rules, then they are going to analyze the first rules. Then when they go for the first rules, is the first rules match? Okay, is the first rules here match? Okay, then I'm going to check, is the rules permit or is denied? If it's a permit, then the ACL matching rules is permit and that's the end, that's all. It will not go to the second rules. If the rules is denied, then again, it will be denied. So we will just base on the action of the ACL and execute whatever action is stated there and that's the end. But let's say the first rule doesn't match, then what will happen? If the first rule is not match, then they will go for the next rule. So let's say they have rules 5, rules 10, rules 15. So it will go from 5, 5 is not match, then go to rules number 10. 10 not match, go to rules number 15. If 15, that's the end already. They only have three rules in this ACL there will be always an implied or, or hidden rules that is always denied. Okay, so if let's say there's a rules, then process as what is stated on the rules, right? So this is how ACL are being matched. So always remember the ACL is from top to bottom. So now you understand why there is a, uh, a step here of five, five, 10, 15, uh, 20, you know, and in between, if let's say you miss out some ACL, you can actually insert in your ACL. Now next is here we have an ACL matching order and a result. So we have a configuration order or in this case we need to go into the uh, configuration mode. The system match the packet against ACL rules in ascending order. So I want to remember is in ascending top to bottom of the rules ID. That is the rules with the smallest ID is processed first. If you look into this example, okay, so if you look into this example, I have rules one, two, three, four. Again, this is not a default step. So default step is five, 10, 15, 20. So we can actually amend the steps. So as you can see that we have a ACL of 2000 and uh, 2000 means that this is based on our basic ACL. And you can see that here, I have permit of a source 192.168.1.1 and a wildcard of 0000 means that this is to match all of these uh, four octave. So we have a single host here, single host here, single host here. And the last here, you can see that rules four permit 0000, 255, 255, 255, 255. What does it mean here? It means that any other packet will be allowed, okay? permit all other IP address because you have a zero and the 255 means that all one all one means that everything is ignored okay any so in this case rules number four means that it will be permit so I will permit anything with 192.168.1.1 that's rules number one okay so this is the rules number one rules number two means that I also want to permit 192.168.1.2 then rules number three I'm going to deny 192.168.1.2 three. Any other than these three, then the rest will be permitted. Clear about that? So there's a question, does permit means traffic is allowed to pass? Yes. Okay. When you have a permit statement means that traffic is allowed to pass. Next, we have the ACL matching position. 
Now remember, our router have interfaces. Okay, so ACL always plays into the interface. So let's say now, as you can see here, I have a uh, packet, a uh, data packet is actually traveling from the left to the right. Okay, so the it is actually here yeah, traveling like this. Okay, from the left to the right. So on the left here, on the left here, we have what we call the inbound. On the right here, we call it as an outbound. Why? Because look into the data packet, uh, how they actually transmit. Remember, it's actually from the left to the right. So configure an ACL on the interface to enable the ACL to take effect for the data packet shown in the figure, apply ACL to the inbound. So if you want to apply for the inbound, means that before they go out, okay? So before the packet go out, then you have to apply it here as an inbound. But if you want to apply it to this interface, then it have to be outbound. So let's say now I have a gig 001, then I also have uh, another gig here. Let's say this is a gig 002. So if let's say the traffic is actually coming from the left to the right, okay, from the left to the right, and I do not want them to go into the router, then I'm going to apply an ACL, and ACL will be applied on gig 0 slash 0 slash 1 as an inbound. And let's say now that the traffic is already inside the router, and I want them to check before it go out, then I'm going to apply on gig 0 slash 0 slash 2 as an outbound. Now, why this is matter? Why? Because that if let's say I have another interface on here, and this interface, let's say I have gig 003, okay? Then I can apply the interface into here, okay, to be outbound. All right, so there are many ways for you to configure the ACL, but one of the concepts I want you to remember is the inbound packet and the outbound packet. When you actually apply ACL on gig 001 as an inbound and look into the traffic, how the traffic coming into your router, then you are trying to match it before it go to the router. But once it's inside the router, you want them to check before they go out, then you have to apply on the interface before it go out. Clear about that? Okay, so uh, to give you a better understanding about the inbound and the outbound direction, so let's look into this example. So I have a packet that is being sent from the left to the right. Is the ACL applied to the interface inbound direction? Okay, so is it an inbound direction? If it's yes, okay, if it's yes, does the ACL permit? So when you have an ACL on this interface and uh, you put it as inbound, and if the interface say that it is permit, then yes, you will let go. Okay, you will let go. If it's denied, then sorry, you will go into the dustbin. But if let's say the ACL is not on this direction, so this is not the direction they come in, but the direction is actually inside the router, inside the router already. So on the other side. So this packet really doesn't doesn't apply. So it will just route the packet. Are you with me? Now go for the second one here. Then we have an outbound. You'll notice that again the traffic is actually from left to the right. Okay, so is the matching route entry available? Now, when we say that matching route entry, which is the routing table, if let's say there is no routing table, then forget it. It won't even go into the ACL. So you must have a routing first. So if let's say there isn't have any routing, again, it will go into the dustbin. If let's say they do have the routing, then route the data packet to the outbound interface. Is the ACL applied to the outbound interface? outbound direction okay so if let's say if you look into here this is the the acl is applied to this is where it's applied to the traffic will be inside the router the router look into the routing table and once it's inside the routing table they check is there any acl that is outbound if it's yes then well check on the acl if it's not an outbound then route is as usual okay so that is the inbound and the outbound.